As 2013 wound to a close, NASA's Exploration Systems Development Division powered through an array of tests and milestones. Vehicle manufacturing, facility construction, and systems testing for NASA's all-new Space Launch System are progressing rapidly. Meanwhile, Orion and the Ground Systems Development and Operations programs prepare for the upcoming launch of Exploration Flight Test 1. The Orion Stage Adapter Diaphragm is a lightweight composite structure that protects the Orion crew capsule from hazardous gases produced by the upper stage engines. The diaphragm was recently pressure tested by joining it to the adapter and sealing with a vacuum. This pressure test simulated atmospheric conditions the hardware may experience during flight and is another essential milestone to ensure crew safety. The Space Launch System's Adaptive Augmenting Control System was tested at the Armstrong Flight Research Center in November. To test the system, SLS's automated avionics computer was installed on one of NASA's versatile FA-18 jets for analysis and validation. The Adaptive Augmenting Controller is an autonomous course correction program designed to instantly detect and adjust to unpredicted changes in flight. By exercising the system in an FA-18 research jet, engineers were able to run dozens of scenarios on each 90-minute flight. Successful deployment of this innovative control system will increase performance and robustness of the rocket as it is steered along the path to deep space. At Mishu Assembly Facility, the first propellant tank dome was completed on the circumferential dome weld tool. The massive propellant tanks used on the SLS core stage are unlike any that have ever been made before and require new tools and processes for construction. The nearby Vertical Assembly Center will house one of the world's largest friction stir welders, which will be used to assemble the liquid hydrogen and oxygen tanks. Last November, 90 trucks poured 900 cubic yards of concrete foundation in preparation for the new Vertical Assembly Center's tower structure and welding elements. This amount of concrete is similar to a foundation for a major modern hotel and will accommodate one of the largest welding tools in the world. With the launch of Exploration Flight Test 1 less than a year away, the Orion program is conducting more frequent, critical testing. In October, at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, the avionics system was installed in the crew module and powered up for the first time the spacecraft came to life and performed as expected in a series of system tests. In December, NASA's Super Guppy arrived from New Hampshire, carrying Orion's most critical safety component, the ablative heat shield. The world's largest and most complex heat shield will protect future crews as the capsule plummets through the Earth's atmosphere, traveling more than 20,000 miles per hour. The heat shield will experience temperatures nearing 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Orion's service module was lifted for a test fit to the spacecraft adapter it will use on Exploration Flight Test 1. With the help of an air-bearing pallet, the adapter was positioned beneath the service module for alignment. A modified version of Orion's launch abort system was completed for the spacecraft's first mission. The launch abort system consists of three motors, the main abort motor, the attitude control motor, and the jettison motor. Because Exploration Flight Test 1 is an uncrewed launch, only the jettison motor of the abort system will be used to separate the structure from the crew module. Across the country, in Sunnyvale, California, Lockheed Martin conducted secondary testing of the fairing panel separation from Orion's service module. These 14-foot-tall protective panels will be jettisoned after the craft reaches an altitude of 560,000 feet. Each panel has six breakable joints that fire apart, followed by six explosive separation bolts, sending them safely away from the capsule and service module. 
Lockheed Martin also successfully conducted the first of many forward bay cover jettison tests. After Orion completes a deep space mission and returns to Earth, it will jettison its forward bay cover at an altitude of 23,000 feet. The cover protects the crew during launch, flight, and re-entry, but must be jettisoned to allow Orion's main parachutes to deploy. At KSC's Vehicle Assembly Building, engineers test fit four ogive panels to the Orion ground test article. These four panels will cover the Orion capsule during launch and attach to the launch abort system. The ogive panel confidence fit was one of many tests designed to simulate the procedures for manufacture, assembly, and stacking. Although NASA and the U.S. Army may seem like unlikely collaborators, both agencies face the same challenges of keeping their men and women safe from chemicals and explosive projectiles. This mutual interest led to NASA's acquisition of four mine-resistant, ambush-protected trucks for use as emergency escape vehicles from Launch Complex 39. The 40,000-pound MRAPs came from Red River Depot in Texas and will be ready for use after some minor modifications. Launch Complex 39 is also getting an upgrade to its mobile launcher. The 405-foot steel tower is being reconfigured and strengthened to accommodate the weight, size, and thrust of the SLS vehicle. After a successful year of construction and testing in 2013, NASA's Exploration Systems Development Division looks forward to its biggest test yet, the flight of EFT-1 in the fall of 2014.